So today I was on IG, just crawling around and everything, and Bleacher Report posted something about KD that blew my mind. Although we all noticed, for whatever reason, I wasn't really paying attention to it. And they posted all KD's big threes. <laughs> and the picture had uh, his big three in OKC, so KD, Russ, James Harden, his big three in Golden State, KD, Steph, and Clay, his big three in Brooklyn, Katie, Kyrie, and James Harden again. And now his big three, his new big three in Phoenix. So they didn't feature Chris Paul, the, the Chris Paul edition, because at this point of his career, he's not, he wasn't really a big three member like that. But the big three in Phoenix, in Katie, Book, and Bradley Beal. And the first thought that came to my mind, I was like, God damn, this man's team has always been stacked. Like people like to talk about LeBron needing help, but Katie. More than anyone needs some help, man. And the fact that he only has two chips to show for it to me is such, such, such a, an underachievement. But that's besides the point. We're not here to slander KD. We're here to actually rank KD's big threes. And I believe this order, the order is obviously Golden State at one. They won two chips. Arguably the greatest team ever assembled. As soon as KD joined, it was over for everyone. Uh, you add... So a player of KD's caliber to a 73 and 9 team and basically you only subtract Harrison Barnes to that mix but you besides the big three you still had Draymond who was actually pretty good offensively at that stage of his career you still had Sean Livingston coming off the bench Steve Kerr obviously a great coach Andre Iguodala coming off the bench. Andre Iguodala was actually so clutch that you had some dumbass takes like Max Kellerman, fate of the universe, the aliens pointing the beam at the planet Earth. Who do I want taking the last shot? I want Andre Iguodala. Andre Iguodala was so good that you have people, analysts on TV saying stuff like that. Still had, uh, you had the Marcus Cousins one year, you had JaVale McGee. Like that team was just amazing. So obviously number one, no conversation to be had over there. At number two, believe it or not, I have this big three. Although they have yet to play a single game, I think that offensively, this is the greatest, the, the greatest big three that he's had, arguably. I have this team at number two just because they have three elite scorers that can score at the three levels, meaning going to the rim and finish mid-range and money, deadly from the mid-range, threes, and get to the lines also all very efficiently, all by themselves, and all... I mean, they're all so versatile offensively. Now, the squad around him, that's another conversation, but when it comes to pure sheer talent and the moment uh, of the careers for all three of these guys, I believe this is the second big three that he's had. Now, the roster is so poor around them. Other than DA, they have nothing that I don't believe they're going to win the chip, but just this big three is number two for me. At number three, I got the big three in OKC because the big three in OKC was actually able to make the finals, right? But James Harden wasn't really James Harden yet. He had some big bursts, but he wasn't, he wasn't the player that he obviously became. Russell Westbrook was great at that time, and KD was amazing, arguably the best version of KD, although, in my opinion, uh, the best version of KD we've seen was uh, Golden State in that first year in Brooklyn when he almost beat Milwaukee by himself. But the reason they were actually able to make the finals is because it wasn't just the big three. It was also Reggie Jackson. It was also Serge Ibaka and a bunch of great role players. That team was stacked. This is why they made the finals. This is, just, this is not just because they had the big three. I believe that Perkins also. Like, yeah, that team was just stacked, stacked. So compared to the, big, uh, to the number two, the Phoenix Suns, I, I like the Phoenix Suns better as a, as a team, as a fit. Uh, when it comes to the big three, then Russ and James Harden, like the fit was so bad, quote unquote, that James Harden had to come off the bench. He wasn't even starting because it just wouldn't work on the court, you know. But that OKC as a squad was a better team than uh, the Phoenix Suns team currently. And at last, we have uh, arguably the greatest disappointment in NBA history in James Harden, KD, and Kyrie. Like from the injuries, the drama. Uh, the questionable fit, the defense, although when they were on the court, they were actually good. Like, they were able to be on the court for 16 games, and that's it. And this, they, they won one playoff series, this unit. So just because of that, they have to be dead last. And James Harden was, at first he was amazing, then he got hurt, and then he just looked like a shell of himself, a shell of himself, sorry. So he, he just 
couldn't fare well against any of the other big three members that we named before, other than the six-man version of himself at this stage of his career. So there goes the ranking for me. Number one, KD is big three with the Warriors. Number two, KD is big three with the Phoenix Suns. Number three, KD is big three with the OKC Thunder. And last, KD is big three with the Brooklyn Nets. So we're going to close the video right here. Again, I'm not here to slander the fact that this man has had has had as much help as anyone in NBA history and for such a great player he only has two rings we're not even going to talk about it I mean if you want to get in the comments to talk about it that's another subject but yeah get in the comment section and give me your thoughts give me your rankings of the big threes of KD's and how far do you believe this big three this current big three can actually go can actually win the chip or not so it's been your boy appreciate you guys for checking me out and I'll catch you guys later peace